While we're on the subject of relationships, I'm going to talk a bit about relationship management. Because when I do a guest speech at Mystery Method seminars, that's generally what I talk about. Because I've had some great, I have dated some absolutely fantastic women in my life. I've been in love, I've fallen out of love, I've dated women that are still some of my best friends, I've dated women that work for the company now. And I think there's probably three rules that I've learned that have been really helpful to me. Now, it's more two rules than a, than a tactic. The first is that you have a lot more power than you think. Use it whatever way you want. I mean, we're on a public forum, so I won't talk about all the ways I've used power, but for those of you that, that know me, I've had some relationships that have been, at the time, exactly what I wanted. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting a traditional relationship, and if that's what you want, you know, go for it. But as a man, you have a lot more power than you think by stating what you want, and going for it. But the corollary to that is don't lie. And I say don't lie for a number of reasons. One, I mean, outside of pickup, it cheapens you, it cheapens who you are. And every, you only get, you only get one self, and every little piece that you take away from yourself takes away part of your identity and who you are. But second, it is so much more attractive and you're so much more likely to get what you want from a relationship, from a woman, by being honest and direct and upfront about what it is that you want than sneaking around the back way, not having the guts to say, oh, by the way, I want to date other people, um, or are you interested in having a threesome, or just sneaking around the back and cheating on her and being furtive about it. You lose so much value, you lose so much of yourself, and it's so unnecessary. I mean, after having gone through any high-quality training program or any high-quality boot camp, you don't need to lie. It's offensive to me to think of somebody who had gone through, say, a mystery method program and comes out of that, gets a great girlfriend, and doesn't have the social skills to manage that relationship to get what he wants out of it. That pains me. So I hope that never happens. Human nature being what it is, it does. But let that be a warning. The second, this is the first tactic, I would say, and this is an unusual one, but this is one that I've seen happen so many times that I thought I'd bring it to light. And that's that guys that maybe haven't always gotten what they want in their life up to this point, once they go through a program, and then they get a woman that they're very interested in, or the woman of their dreams, and they maneuver the relationship, if this is what they want, to be able to see other women at the same time, to not fall into the exclusivity barrier, there's a tendency among a lot of guys to throw it back in a woman's face. And to a woman, it's a very different thing to intellectually know that your man might be sleeping with other women to actually, and from that, to actually be confronted with evidence of it, to be told about it, to have to hear about it, to see, you know, the, the extreme, to see used condom wrappers in, you know, in your boyfriend's bedroom. There, I've seen this happen, not the condom wrappers, but I've seen the relationship problems happen so many times because guys get so enthusiastic about the fact that all of a sudden, now you're a man, now you can do what you want, don't go down that path. Enjoy your social victory, enjoy the fact that you've got the relationship that you want with the woman that you want, and don't rub it in. Don't mention other girls, don't you know, leave evidence of them around, don't go out of your way to hide everything, but don't throw it in a girl's face. Just not necessary. Being genuine. Remember the last LA boot camp? About halfway through the first night, I was just, I wasn't really instructing, I was just sort of doing the rounds of the students, making sure everybody was, you know, getting what they need, doing well. And I approached this one guy, and he's like, mumbled something about body language. He's not having a good night because his body language was off. I was like, no, dude, you're off. It's not your body, we don't sugarcoat things, obviously, as I've mentioned before. Something's wrong with your state, with your head, with something, because you're just not, 
you're not projecting anything. You're not, you, I don't see anything about you. You're being, you're, I could see right through you. I could walk through you. So he went and had a beer, and he started to ask me questions about pickup, like how do I change this? How do I give this impression? And that wasn't what I wanted to hear. I wanted to find out who this guy was. What are your dreams? What are your goals? Nothing about women, but just find out this guy's story. And he was actually a pretty damn interesting guy. You know, he lived in Africa for a while. He was a doctor. He'd volunteered with Doctors Without Borders. Um, he had you know, all sorts of interesting things going on in his life. And we were talking, and the night closed. We went over to Mel's Diner, which is, I guess, pickup central in LA. And I started talking to these two women at the, the table behind us. I just started talking to them, and I started talking about this friend of mine who had done all of these things that the guy I was with had done. And they were getting very interested in hearing about this guy. And I'm like, hey, you know, do you want to meet him? And they were so excited. And the student, his name is Brad, was just like tripping out. He'd never seen cute girls be interested in him for who he was. Now, do you take a step back from that and go in, hi, I'm Brad, I'm a doctor, work for Med Saint um, Doctors Without Borders? No, of course not. You still have to play the game, and you still have to know the rules of the game. And the first, you need the first 20 minutes or seven hours or whatever, wherever you draw the distinction to get a woman's attention enough that she's actually going to be willing to listen to you when you start conveying personality. You still have to play by the rules. But once you've got a woman's attention, you have to convey personality. Because all of these, these tactics and ideas that will get you through the openings in the first few stages separates you from the pack and gets somebody's attention. But then conversely, if you stay with it, you're going back into the pack. And you're going to the small pack of you know, player guy that's emotionally unavailable. And she has nothing to grab onto. The next day when she thinks of, some guy, thinks of you, she'll think, oh, that guy was really funny and had good social skills. Not, oh my god, that was the coolest guy I met. I could learn from this guy. He's, you know, he's interested in me. Um, we got a lot in common. So you got to know when to be genuine. But you also got to know when to be realistic. And this is probably, the, this is the third point. I'm not sure whether Isabella on the plane you know, meant be yourself. I think she meant, for a guy, be who you want to be. You know, when I went talking to Brad after he'd, been, he'd interact with those two girls, and he hadn't had, at that point, the skills really to go very far with it, because we teach that stuff on the second day. And I started asking about his ideal woman. And this burst of self-confidence seems to have put his expectations sky high, because all of a sudden, now he wants to date actresses and supermodels. And I had to tell him, dude, you're not there. You don't, to date, and we'll use shorthand, you know, if you're ever going to rate a woman from 1 to 10, if to date a 9 or a 10, put it this way, you cannot get, or if you can get, you cannot hold a 9 or a 10 without a coherent, convincing identity that is both interesting and exciting to a woman and congruent with who you really are. And that's a big mouthful, so I'm going to say it again. You cannot get, or if you can get, you cannot hold a 9 or a 10 without a coherent, convincing identity that's interesting and attractive to her, but also congruent with who you are. You may have to change your personality. A lot of people do have to change their personality. Most people have to change their personality. I'm changing my personality every day. I'm not embarrassed about it. It's called self-improvement. But figure out where you're going. I'm not a big Stephen Covey fan, but one thing that he said that kind of sticks with me is if you don't know where you're going or what, it's, what your goal is, what it's going to look like when you get there, your odds of succeeding are very, very small. You're kind of playing God with your personality. So be careful. Because the more, be careful what you pretend to be, you might find yourself becoming that person. I'm not a pickup artist because when I joined this as a business opportunity, I decided I didn't want to be a pickup artist. Doesn't mean I don't love going out and meeting women, but I have a very specific set of goals in terms of my relationships with women, 
and however you define pickup artist, that's not it. Now, I have no value judgments about that. This is just where I am and where I want to be. And you have to take the Venusian arts or the pickup arts on your own terms. Hey, it's Clifford. I hope you enjoyed that video. This is really the tip of the iceberg. In order to really transform your life into being the type of man that women go to bed dreaming about, you need to access our exclusive and famous free newsletter. To do so, click on the link below in our description and submit your application. Once your application is submitted, if I'm convinced that you've got what it takes to become one of us and make your dating life the stuff of legends, you'll receive a personal email from me with the next steps to take. I will see you on the other side.